with what does it mean to be rich? What does it mean? Well, if you ask Oxford over here, they'll tell you that rich is having a great deal of money or assets, i.e. being wealthy. Or they'll say it's producing a large quantity of something. Okay, probably things that we conceptually would have came up with for the word rich. The problem with this word, or how we've been using it, is that it includes no standard of what a great deal actually means. We have not come up with a way to quantify what riches is according to Oxford. Also, the second big problem with this is that it equates riches to wealth. And once I discuss wealth, it makes more sense why this is a big problem. But what we leave here today we're going to redefine rich as this. The excess of resources according to the standard necessities of life. The excess of resources according to the standard necessities of life. That, that is, if I need four to live and I have seven, I am rich. If I need one true friend in life and I have three, I am rich in friendships. This definition goes beyond economic and financial Game. This definition covers all facets of life. Relationships, emotionally, mentally, intellectually, and yes, economically. Yeah. What does it mean to be successful, to embody success? Well, if you ask Oxford, Oxford once again, they'll tell you it is the accomplishment of a name or purpose. Okay, that's not too bad, right? The second definition that they'll give you is a person or a thing that achieves desired aims or attains fame or wealth. They got a little murky there. That's what they messed up, right there, wealth. The problem, there's two big problems, just like in bridges. These definitions make success the destination. And I'm sure we've all heard the cliche, you know, success is not the destination, it's the journey. So what I call it a cliche because we all heard it. And there's truth behind it. And I'll dig into it a little bit. The second problem is that, again, it equates success to wealth. No more. From now on, when you leave here, when you call yourself successful, or I want to be successful, this is what you mean. You want to actively fulfill your definite purpose. Success is the active fulfillment of one's definite purpose. So, are you successful? Are you actively fulfilling your definite purpose? Your purpose, the commandment that our Elohim, that our Heavenly Father gave to you for your life. That is what purpose truly really is. His commandment to you, that personal commandment. Are you successful? Are you actively fulfilling that? Better yet, before you can even answer that, or conceptualize answering that, you first need to ask yourself, what is my purpose? What is my purpose in this life? But before we dig deep, we will. We're gonna dig deep. Let's touch on wealth. What does it mean to be wealthy? Let's ask Oxford. They haven't been doing so great thus far, but we'll, we'll ask them again, right? According to Oxford, to be wealthy means to have an abundance of a valuable possession or money. Or it can be the state of being rich. Rich, material prosperity. Or it's a plentiful supply of a particular desirable thing. The overarching problem with all three of these definitions is that it equates wealth to stuff. And like I mentioned earlier, words are incredibly powerful. Imagine if we could reshape this word to give more depth and meaning. So when you say it, and that word goes on a mission, what it brings back is something more than just stuff. There's no fulfillment in material man-made stuff. So from now on, when you live your life, you walk out these doors, you're not going to equate wealth to stuff. You will equate wealth as this. Wealth is the story we create by the actions we take to leave behind as an inheritance or legacy. It's okay if you don't get it off the bat. I'm gonna say it again. 
Wealth is the story we create by the actions we take to leave behind as an inheritance or legacy. Put it to you like this. Wealth is like a seed planted by running waters whose roots grow deep and whose trunk grows strong and whose, whose limbs and whose leaves grow to span across the sky, whose limbs bear much fruit, whose fruit is sweet and whose savor is nice. What type of tree, what type of fruit are you bearing in your life, if any? These are the questions we need to start asking ourselves. These fruits represent your character. They represent the things you'll leave behind, right? Is it, is it going to be good things when people look back and remember you in your life? Is it just that you were hardworking? Is this that you made a nice amount of money? Or is it going to be the impact you made from the seedling that the Most High put inside of you? Is it the words that you have spoken, the words of life, the words of light? That's what people need. They don't need the money. We don't need the money. Money is man-made. This is what wealth is like. But you have to ask yourself a question before you can even say, what fruit am I bearing? First, you need to ask, what type of tree am I? Are you an apple tree emulating, acting like an orange tree, going around saying, I got the best oranges in town, but you're an apple tree? So when people bite into your fruit, it's disgusting. It's bitter. You got to spit it out. You got to evaluate yourself. Are you trying to be something you're not meant to be? What type of tree are you? That is the equivalent. Matter of fact, it reminds me of a story. There was a kingdom some time ago. And this kingdom was growing. The people were multiplying quickly, exponentially, right? And so the king said in his heart, I need my kingdom to expand so the people can live comfortably and thrive and succeed, right? So the king did a very genius thing. The king set a decree. He said, okay, I want all the children to come into my palace so I can give them something. And so lined up one by one, all the children of the kingdom came to him. And then one by one, he gave each of these children a tool, a handcrafted tool. Some of these children got hammers, some got screwdrivers, socket wrenches, saws, all types. Any tool you can think of was being distributed, right? And on each of these tools, he inscribed on it, use this to build my kingdom, right? On each of them, he put his initials by it. So now these children, you know, they're leaving the palace, they're going back home, holding this tool in their hand. No idea what it's supposed to do. Don't even know what to call it. They're getting home, you can just imagine them banging on different stuff, like what in the world? What am I supposed to do with this, right? But then, after some time, we start to see groups of children come together. They started building miraculous things. Tables, chairs, houses, beds, couches, all types of beautiful creations, right? Then we see some children who use their tool to destroy things. They went around breaking windows, pulling off wood panels, taking apart the creation that the other children are working so hard to build. And then we see some children not use their tool at all, but instead went around collecting other tools, right? Then one day, unannounced, the king said another decree. He said, okay, now I want all the children to come back to my palace so I can ask them one question. The question he asked them each, with the tool that I handcrafted and gave to you, how have you used it to build my kingdom? That's a, that was a scary question for some of those children. But for those children who had used their tool to build miraculous things, when he asked them the question, they responded with joy and gladness and said, I have built all these things. They even mentioned who they built it with, right? And the king was filled with joy. Matter of fact, he was so glad with them that he reached into his storehouse and gave them a reward and said, thank you, you may go back into the kingdom. Then, for those children who went around destroying things, 
taking things apart with their tool. When he asked them the question, with their heads hung low, disappointed in themselves, they responded, I didn't know how to use my tool, so I broke things. I took things apart. The king was really disappointed in saying that. So he took their tool and then banished them outside the kingdom. And then, for those children who went around collecting tools, never using it, but just collecting them, when he asked them the question, they responded with their heads held high, full of pride. Well, I didn't build anything, but look at all the tools I've collected. The king, frustrated, disappointed, all types of emotions running through him. He took all their tools and banished them outside the kingdom as well. And then he called all the children back that had been working for him. He said, thank you all. I want to give you all another gift. And he lined them up one by one just like he did in the beginning. And then he redistributed the tools that he had taken from the other children because he knew that they would continue to build his kingdom. Now, in case you didn't catch it, we are just like your children. We have all been given very unique, special, heavenly divine, handcrafted tools fit for your life, your life only. Nobody else who has ever lived or ever will be fits your exact mold. But with that tool that you were given, what have you done? What have you built for his kingdom? That's a tough one. That's a tough one now. <laughs> Matter of fact, before you can even focus on what have I been building, do you know what your tool is? What is your tool? What is that thing, that characteristic, that natural ability, that gift that you were given, that you somehow can't explain, but you can feel it when you're using it? That's the fulfillment that we're all searching for in different ways and methods. What is your tool? Well, if you don't understand, I know the answer to that. I'm not going to say it's okay, because it's really not. But don't be afraid. There's a way. And the way, the truth, and the light will unveil your purpose. Matter of fact, I have been gifted by my Heavenly Father a five-step program to help you find your tool. I'm calling it the rebel effect. R-E-P-L-E, -E, the rebel effect. It is a five-step program to helping you find your tool and understanding its utility. This is the courtyard of where success, true success, riches, true riches, and wealth, true wealth, converge. They all meet here at your purpose. Here are the five. Is this, y'all want to go through this? I was going to make sure it's of general yeah. interest, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Five, yeah. Okay, all right, just, just gauging. Five step process. Step one is reflect. It's a hard pill to swallow. Reflect. Because it's hard to look in the mirror when all you see is the filth and disgust of your past. Mm. It's hard to take a look at yourself. When all you can see and feel is the shadow of greatness, you know you are called to embody. It is hard, it's hard to reflect, but it is absolutely necessary and crucial on this path of growth. You have to reflect on the mistakes. You have to reflect on the wins, the losses, the hurt, the joy, the people in your lives. You have to reflect on the words you have spoken. Your words have power. Reflect. But once you dig deep, once you can identify those characteristics, those traits, those patterns that have formed over your life, this is the beginning of the unveiling of the identity of your tool. The next step is expand. I'm not talking about, you know, buying new land and stuff. That's good. That's good. We got real estate in the house. That's good. I'm talking about expanding the vision you have for yourself. The vision of your future. Expand your mind to see beyond five minutes in front of your face. Expand your thinking. 
I want you to paint a picture of your future self who is now using their tool, your tool, to expand the kingdom. Got to dig deep. Reinvigorate that childlike imagination. Unless you be like a child, we all heard it. Unless you be like a child, I'm adding a new layer of death to it. Unless you be like the child who can spark up that imagination and say, you know what, it may not make sense for me to want to become a motivational speaker, to become an engineer, a doctor, to save lives. It doesn't make sense right now because my finances, because of where I've come from. Get that out of your head. We're talking about your life. We're talking about your tool. I am talking about your purpose. The reason you were created It's not for yourself. It's not for you. That's what you'll find out at the end. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I'm going to give you a hint. You weren't created for yourself. Expand the vision you have of yourself. Step two. Oh, I've got to mention Step two, this is where you learn the utilization of your tool, how to use your tool. And then step three, I like how I was writing it well, is plan. This will be your blueprint for success, that true success that we talked about, the act of fulfillment of one's purpose. Plan it out. There's, a, there's an activity that I've done with a, a cohort called Project 20 AG, excuse me, at the University of Louisville. Or basically, it's like the step after the unveil process, the referral effect here. And I went through this, this workshop with some students, and they had trouble getting through expand. But once I got to the point where they were creating a vision of themselves, the planning part was the most fun. Because the prompt goes, here's the prompt for planning, right? Five years out, just imagine five years out from now. What is the ideal day look like for you? And I'm not talking about the dream vacation, right? Like, that stuff is fun, it's good to think about. But I'm talking about that version of you that is using your tool to its maximum, the most fulfilling way possible. What is that version of you doing? Create that blueprint, set it all out. Starting with the end goal in mind, create hard milestones and goals you need to accomplish to get there. And then on top of that, create a list. Create a list of the people you need to interact with, the stuff you need to learn, the certifications you may need to be certified. Write it all out, put it all out. This is your blueprint to success. And then once all that is out, out of your brain and on paper, step four, learn. This one is the trickiest and most stickiest. This is where people get trapped. This is where people get stuck. Learn. Now that you have your blueprint for success, you have a list of the things you need to accomplish, stuff you can start checking off. Learn is you going to learn it. It's you maybe going back to school a little bit. I know I don't want to hear it. Maybe go back to school, all right? A couple years, get your get your degree, get that certification. Maybe it's finding somebody, a mentor. You got a bunch of potential mentors in there. I hope somebody clings to somebody else. All right? This is the learning process. But you have to be really careful. Be incredibly careful because if you're not focused on how you're supposed to use your tool for your life, there, you will get distracted easily. Because there's going to be all types of modes and methods of enhancing your tool, of reshaping your tool. Find ways to collect new tools, right? Here's my favorite. Learn how to prosper from your tool. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's all over social media. Those things, all these, you know, up and coming millionaires showcasing new ways to just make money. That's not what fulfillment is. That's not what you created. Show me the scripture where it says, thou shalt go make money. Nah, it's not in there. It's not in there. Matter of fact, my word tells me that the love of money is the root of all evil. Got to be careful. Don't make money your focus. Don't make it the priority because you'll look up and realize everything else in your life is falling apart. You can have all the money in the world. Look at the celebrities nowadays. Mm -hmm. All the money, all the riches, quote unquote riches, all the fame, and yet they're struggling on drugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Looking for new ways to, to get creative and, 
and reject their true purpose in life. They're distracted. They're in a pit. It's probably torment for a lot of them. Mm. To think that you've worked your whole life to build towards something, and then you get it to only realize, I've been going down the wrong path. Mm. I've been going down the wrong path. That's why learning is tricky. It's easy to get trapped in there. It's easy to get stuck finding ways to, to collect more tools college system, I'm just going to say it, <laughs> finding ways to collect more tools that have little to do with your purpose. You've got to be real with yourselves. It's ugly. But learn. This is what sharpening your tool looks like. Let's just recap real quick. Reflect. This is unveiling the identity of your tool. Expand. This is knowing how to use your tool, what that looks like in your future. Three, plan. This is your blueprint for how you're going to use your tool to build something. Four, learn. This is you sharpening your tool, getting ready for step five. Execute. Perhaps the simplest, not easy, not easy, but the simplest step of the moment. Execute. That person, that vision that you have been holding of yourself, that when you made in step two, that vision that you have of yourself. Emulate, become that person. Talk the way they talk. Walk the way they walk. Smile like they smile. Give like they give. Surround yourself with the people that they are surrounded with. Become that person. Execute in the fullness of your capability. Even if you can't see it for yourself in that moment, there's gonna be days where you wake up and you don't want to do it. I had one of those days not too long. There's going to be days when you question yourself. Is this really, can I really do this? The plagues of social media, the plagues of society, the plagues of darkness that exist around us are out to dim our light. But we have to fight back. We have to continually reflect, continually expand, continually plan, learn, and execute. And a funny thing here at Step 5 happens. It's a universal law. It's also mentioned in the scriptures. Out in the world, in some countries, they call it karma, the law of attraction. What you sow, so shall you reap. This is where that happens. Expand. Because now you're taking an action. You are showing your creator, hey, I don't have all the answers, but I'm moving on belief. Mm -hmm. I'm putting your word, or what I believe your word is in my life, to action. And you know what he does in return? He starts sending people your way that fill in the gaps. When you're not sure, how are you going to pay for those bills? But I got to trust in the Father. I got to trust in my Heavenly Father. When you do that, you show them, okay, he got you. You're going, you're going to get that mysterious check in now. What in the world did this come from? So he's going to send you somebody. You want to start a business and you don't know all the ins and outs, he'll put somebody around you. Right? That being said, when you pray and you sit down and ask for wisdom, you have to recognize it. You got to know what to do. Hey, Sometimes I can use it in my own personal life. I pray for wisdom, and in the back of my mind, I'm looking for a specific way he's going to give it to me. <laughs> when does that, in the scripture, when did that ever happen? <laughs> that is not, that's not what belief is. Pray for wisdom, he's going to give it to you. But you've got to be ready because it may come in the form of a person, a word, an act of kindness. So, hey, be ready, y'all. Like this is the five step process. And I don't know if the link is working at the moment, but uh, if you want to get access to this future online course I'm building, it's the first of many. Um, the ripple effect of how to find your purpose. Um, just come find me. I can put your name on a list and your email, and you will join our mailing list for uh, when I launch officially in November. Ripple effect. But I would be remiss. I would be doing a major disservice if I led you all to believe that the journey of growth was just all sunshine, rainbows, lollipops, and gumdrops, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure, you know, y'all grown folk, y'all know life, that's not what life is. It's not smooth. In Sirach, you know, in Ecclesiasticus, chapter 40, I believe, it says, great travail has been appointed for all men, everybody, from the time you exit the womb there's going to be something out to attack. The road is bumpy. The path is going to be cracks in it. There's going to be people that come into your life to try to pull you off. 
or you're off the road, there's going to be distractions on the side that try to pull you and lure you into a land of comfort. Don't be comfortable, y'all. Don't be comfortable. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. So you really have to evaluate. Ask yourself, what will it cost? What will it cost you to create your story to leave behind as an inheritance or a legacy? What is it going to cost you? Everything costs something. For some, it may cost you friendships. For some, a great deal of time and energy. For some, respect. You lose respect. When family doesn't understand why in the world did he leave school, why did he, why did he go off? He went to go start a business and where? He went to move to Africa? What? <laughs> when you feel led, when your purpose is pulling you in a different direction, that's between you and your creator. That's, right. that's his commandment for your life. You can't let the noise of other people come in and pull you away from that. It's going to cost you something, though. It's flesh. It's contrary to the spirit. You read it throughout that whole book. And just in case you didn't know, the Bible actually has very little, almost going to say nothing to do with religion. You stop to think about it. It's not religious. It's not a religion book. It's an instruction manual. The keys to success. Everything I'm saying has been rooted in that word. That's a discussion for another time. Give me that. But it's going to cost you. But I will tell you that the cost of fulfilling your purpose is well worth it. Because when you're sitting at home and in that quiet space, that space where you just turn the TV off, and then those thoughts creep into your mind, you're asking yourself, what am I doing with my life? Why am I here? You even might doubt our Creator. Is He really there? How? He hasn't been answering my prayers like I thought He would. He hasn't been moving in my life like I thought he would. When you start asking yourself those questions, the arrows are pointing you back to one thing. The commandment of your life, your purpose. In that still moment, when you feel there's a hole inside of you that you try to fill with money, you try to fill it with sexual immorality, immorality. you try to fill it with drugs, killing time, distraction, social media, all these modes of distraction. when all the signs are pointing you back to your purpose. Because in that, it's fulfillment. There's nothing else on this planet that will fulfill that commandment for your life other than your purpose. That you wrote yourself, ask yourself. When that king calls you to the front of the line and asks you with the tool that I gave you, how have you been building for my kingdom? What can you say? What are you going to be able to say? Whew, that's tough. What, what group of the children will you be in? Will you be the children who have found their purpose, how to utilize their tool, got together with other people and started building miraculous things, creating more room, more space, more opportunities for the people around you? Hint, hint. I'm hinting at something there. Or are you going to be like those children? who knew they had this tool, but wasn't sure, didn't take the time to understand its utilization, so they went around destroying things, tearing other people's visions down, getting in the way of stuff, and interjecting themselves in situations where they don't belong. Or even be like those children that spend all their time, not even using their tool, but collecting other tools, learning for the sake of learning, getting understanding, but having no wisdom. When he calls and asks you, what are you going to be able to say? I know what I want to say. I know what I'm working towards. We've got to be real with ourselves. It's going to cost something. Though. It's going to cost something. Everything costs something. But I will tell you, the cost of fulfilling your purpose is far cheaper than the cost of doing nothing. Because sacrifice weighs ounces, but regret weighs tons. <laughs> The only person in your way is you. Mm. The only person in your way is you. Mm -hmm. Make the right choice. Do what you know you're supposed to do. If you don't know what your tool is, 
find it. That's what my nonprofit is for. Let me help you find it. Because you were born, the world has an opportunity to never be the same. Mm. And to take that step of belief, though. Take that step of belief. Thank you all so much for inclining your ear to me. I pray that the seeds that my Heavenly Father gave me have landed on good soil that will take root, sprout, and grow into miraculous new form of life. Thank you for your time.